Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is me putting my glasses down and making a little clatter. I'll do it again. There you go. So I'm just going to make a recording. I'm using Spreaker, the online Spreaker uh, app to record this. And I've already made a, uh, that's my chair by the way, squeaking, creaking. I've already made a Let Me Bore You To Sleep session earlier. For some reason, I want to make another recording. So I'm going to go with it and do something else, but not a bore you to sleep session. I want to do something different. So what I thought, I would do a stop smoking session. And in the past I did, I have done and it's still available, a 28 day stop smoking course. Uh, I've also done uh, four individual stop smoking sessions as well. So this is the fifth, or if you include the four for the 28 days, so if, what's that, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the ninth one. This is going to be a bit different because previously when I made the stop smoking sessions I had not been smoking myself for about nine years but last year I started smoking again but I have stopped again and this session really, I'm going to say that this session is going to be aimed at people similar to myself that have stopped in the past, but then started again. And you'll understand why as you listen further, why this is more for you. Uh, although in a sense, we've all stopped, haven't we? I'm guessing. I've never ever met a smoker that hadn't stopped at some point, whether for a few days, few weeks, few months, few years even. But what I've noticed is those that have stopped in the past for a considerable amount of time managed to stop again with just a lot easier it's a lot psychologically it's an easier process because you know you can do it and that's you know in a way stopping smoking after having started again after having stopped for a while you know it's it's a bit like maybe not having, maybe having a driving ban or not being able to drive or just not driving for a couple of years. And there's a little bit of rust there. There's a little bit of maybe so you don't feel as confident in your ability uh, to do what you did before as you used to. Because in the past you didn't give it any thought because it was just the natural process of your day-to-day -day life but that can change because nature kind of does that anyway this we're always changing and we're always moving forward and there's also the aspect of wanting to make those changes and wanting to have those results so I will say that really 
only listen to this firstly when you can safely close your eyes just in case you get bored and fall asleep and you know you're driving a tractor or something I don't want you to plough through the whole field and end up losing lots of crops or anything like that but also only listen to this when you really really want to stop or stay stopped because you may be listening to this haven't already stopped because I would advise you listen to this same session every day for 30 days and it's going to be so boring <laughs> it's going to be so boring oh I can't even I mean the first time you listen to it it's going to be boring so don't expect to sit on the edge of your seat with excitement that's not going to happen and I've got no intention of making that happen because it's going to be boring it's not an exciting thing the exciting part is you get to live longer potentially you get to feel physically better emotionally happier you get to have more money in your pocket you know just those little things that actually can be huge things that make a difference and I can't be bothered to go through what some people would go through you know the putting you through a guilt trip because that stuff doesn't work with me doesn't work on me I don't you know when I stopped smoking I used hypnosis it was self hypnosis and it worked and it wasn't the standard hypnosis session that maybe I've made in the past this is much more it was deep it was deep within me and very personal very personal because that's one of the good things of talking to yourself the you know the self hypnosis -y stuff is you're talking directly to you and we're talking to ourselves all the time anyway but quite often and it's very unfortunate and very harmful as well some of the things that we say to ourselves and I include myself within this so I, when I talk about that stuff I'm not saying it that you're doing it I say we're all doing it we're all perhaps saying negative things to ourselves putting ourselves down without even maybe being aware of it the more aware of it you are now the less it happens doesn't mean it's going to stop happening altogether but the less it happens the happier you are then you can start saying some nice things to yourself it's a bit like I suppose let's say you're good at something like really exceptionally good at a sport for example so you've got a let's say a young man a young woman or doesn't have to have don't have to be young but you know a man or a woman or a boy or a girl and whatever they however they see themselves or experience themselves or whatever they say to themselves there are times when they are saying nice things to themselves if they've been playing football and they've scored a goal or if they've I don't want to focus just on sports but whether it's finishing a page of a book maybe it's publishing a book maybe it's making a video on YouTube and uploading it and getting some likes or posting something on Facebook getting some likes or some nice comments 
or maybe you've made a cake for somebody's wedding and they've told you how lovely it is and you can feel that sense of pleasure and you can say those things to yourself in the same way with not smoking that period that time when you weren't doing it anymore it turned from being maybe a big deal into regular day-to-day -day stuff and you didn't see yourself you didn't experience yourself as somebody that smoked me and you knew that you used to do it but it's not something that you'd perhaps think about very often I think parts of the past for me it's like a toilet you know some things that you put in the what well, I'd say most things you put in the toilet you flush away and you don't want to think about it again and maybe some parts of the past need to be viewed in the same way as it's of no use to you anymore you know the, your body's done the magic you've turned the food into poo and now it's flushed away and that part of your life when you smoked that part of your life the bit the actual smoking bit it happened and it's kind of of no consequence now because it's in the past and as we all know you can't change the past you can change how you feel about the past I mean you technically can change the past as far as your memories and you can change your memories and you can blank out parts of what happened which is something that we all maybe do to a certain extent anyway in order to cope with perhaps traumas and things like that but smoking isn't a traumatic thing it was a choice that you made back then just like it was for me it was a choice no one made me do it no one could ever make me no one can't make someone to smoke not an adult and I realised that wasn't even a proper sentence you can't make somebody to smoke but it sounded nice quite poetic and this is about a feeling a feeling that you have that feeling that you had for however long it was maybe it was weeks, months, years that feeling when you didn't smoke when you could have a meal and cigarettes weren't even on your mind wasn't even a, a thought you had other things to focus on And it's amazing how we are able to adapt to changes not just those changes that are going to happen naturally but also the changes that we are focusing on right now also what I find amazing about these recordings is you can listen to me for I don't know half an hour 40 minutes sometimes an hour 
Uh, if you're unlucky, it could be <laughs> an hour and a half. And no matter how boring or pointless some of it seems, or even how uh, I may seem to go off on a tangent in a different direction to how you may expect it to have gone when you first decided to listen and make those changes, it actually, there's something happens at the end. Something, it happens during, but it's something, it's about how you feel. Not just during the session, during the recording, but how you feel afterwards. And not just directly at the end. I don't mean, you know, you press the stop button at the end of recording, stand up and say, okay, well, how do I feel now? Which you might do. You may stay seated and do the same thing. You may just decide to ponder and just absorb those changes, that energy having moved around your body and your mind. There's so many different ways to look at this, to experience this. Sometimes feel a bit like, you know you've got a brick wall, or you know, just a general wall, and it's got a hole in it, in the wall, you know, maybe it's, uh, you used to have a nail in there and you, you know you pulled it out and it's just a hole and things can get in and out of the hole you know uh, dust and dirt and maybe the hole's big enough and you could actually put things in there it's big enough to put a coin or why you'd want to put a coin in a hole I don't know or a sausage or a carrot or you know it might be a sizable hole where you can um, just put random things in for no good reason maybe cigarettes I used to do that years ago I used to have a, a cigarette that I used to keep on the top of a just like in this whole thing and just let's leave it there even though I didn't smoke that was like that was after I'd stopped and I was like just to remind myself I forgot it was there it got proper dried out really dried out it was uh, very dusty a bit mouldy as well but hey, it probably wouldn't have done me any more harm if I put arsenic on it. But it would have been just as uh, healthy. So, yeah, so I, you got this hole, let's say the cigarettes are in there, you put the stuff in there. But the second you fill that hole in with putty, plaster, whatever you use to fill holes in, you can no longer put things in there things can no longer get out of there and it's a bit like that with your mind when you consider that maybe there's a very tiny part of your mind that's responsible for that uh, want of cigarettes or craving whatever, you, whatever word you want to give it so that's one so, you know, we've got craving for different things. It's standard. Sometimes I get a bit of craving for some ice cream or, you know, maybe a cup of coffee, a tea cake. It's not necessarily a strong craving, but a few months back I did. I had a proper craving for chips, uh, like fish and chips. Chips, uh, you call them fries in America or whatever, but ah, uh, really, and we have a... A chip van that comes around one one time you know one day a week one evening a week I craved the chip so much that I was phoning the van 
telling them, asking them, you know, when are you going to get here? When are you going to get here? And I just, once they got here and I'd had the chips, the craving was gone, but I couldn't understand. It's like, what was that all about? I've not had any chips since because it was out of, bit out of character a bit. It was like a pointless craving. You can imagine if I had, we all had that craving for world peace. Or, you know, it's like, God, imagine how the world would change. That kind of craving to make changes in the world. So, yeah, I had, um, I had the chips. But there's that part of your mind that's responsible and it's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit that's responsible for craving cigarettes, craving smoking. Tiny bit. It's not, you know, if you think of how big your brain is and all the different things that your brain does, you know, taking care of every part of your body, everything that happens within your body, every thought, every memory all comes every the ability to cognize the ability to listen to understand these words all happening within your mind within your brain so that part which is the craving gets broken up into however many bits as far as how many things that you like to have. Things that you might enjoy doing. So that tiny, tiny bit is then broken up into more tinier bits. And one of those tiny bits is the part responsible that is activated when you're craving to smoke a cigarette, a roll up, a pipe, a cigar or whatever it is that you may um, put in your mouth and suck on I don't know whatever uh, I've never had a pipe myself I've had a cigar and very smelly very oh so that craving and let's face it it's never really satisfied either that's the weird thing about that craving. So if I get craving for a chocolate bar, I can have the chocolate bar and the that little bit of craving is satisfied. But with tobacco, with smoking, it's never satisfied. Which is a bit pointless. Because if I had the same thing with chocolate, that same inability to satisfy that pointless craving, but it was with chocolate, I would be very, very big. You know, I'd I'd be stuck in this chair because I wouldn't be able to. I'd just keep eating and eating and eating chocolate and chocolate and more chocolate never being able to be satisfied because of that craving. But with cigarettes, again, it's never satisfied because maybe, I don't know, what, what is it that the craving really wants? Some theories is that people smoke because it gives them an opportunity to take a break from their work, take a break from other people, maybe go outside and spend some time on their own. We don't need to smoke to do that. Some people maybe get out of smoking is the opposite. They they take a break, but they get to stand with other colleagues, work colleagues that also smoke and get to know new people. I've done that without smoking. 
I've worked at places and gone outside and stood in the smoking area and chatted to people because otherwise I wouldn't have got to know them. So that tiny, tiny, tiny part of your mind, of your brain, that's actually responsible for the craving that you used to have for cigarettes, is just like that little hole in the wall. You basically fill it in with something else. You fill that hole in with something else, which is going to block the hole and the block, block that ability to crave anymore it's like it's not able to function because it's no longer what it was not that it was any use to start with but you still got the ability to crave other things that you used to crave at times but nothing needs to replace this because what you do is you fill it with a feeling you fill it with a feeling so instead of like with a wall you'd have plaster or um, I have to make this up as I go along because I'm not a DIY I'm not a builder I'm not a you know, an expert on plastering or holes in walls. It might seem like I am sometimes, but I'm really not. But there's material, there's stuff that you can fill the hole in, and at the end of it, you wouldn't, you know, if you paint over it, you wouldn't know there was ever a hole there. And the hole ceases to be a hole, just like a pothole in a road. Once it's filled in, it ceases to be a pothole. Just like a field, a farm, a field. Once you build on that farm and lay down concrete foundations and all the different things, again, I'm not a builder, but all the things involved in building a council estate or a big block of flats. That field is no longer a field. A television ceases to be a television once you turn the power off. You unplug it. What use is it? When something doesn't have any energy or power, it can't work. Doesn't can't do anything. Is this nothing there? I'm looking at my television now as it is plugged in, but it's turned off. It's doing nothing. It's on standby, so I can see the red light at the bottom. And there's only so much pleasure I can get from a red light. So it's not quite the same as watching, you know, something on Netflix. So it would be a pointless item if it's not being used, if there's no way of getting any energy to it, no power to it when it's unplugged. The only way I can watch television is if I press a button on the remote control to start it, to turn it on. But if I lost the remote control, I wouldn't be able to turn the television on at all. So when that thing is disconnected, filled in with a different feeling, which you can choose that feeling. It can be the opposite to the 
craving of cigarettes it could be what is the opposite to that because sometimes I think and it happened with me is that hole got replaced with a craving for other things which was less harmful but still not great for me and I put weight on and all that stuff but what you could do is you could actually focus and fill it with something that you'd like to do like with an energy maybe something you'd like to feel a sense of accomplishment a sense of realizing that you've made a change yourself something that you have decided to do and you can decide what feeling you inject into that hole it can be love it can be happiness it can be deep relaxation it can just be a word peace It could be a smile, the smile of your child. Just the image of the smile of your child can just replace that craving, that hole, fill it in. So actually, that feeling you get when you see your child smile, that love that fills you, that gratitude can be there. And that's one of many examples that you could use. It can be whatever you choose it to be. What's the point in me telling you to use a certain feeling or a certain memory or a picture or a sound unless that image or sound or feeling is actually relevant to you and your life. So I'm going to count from 20 down to 1 and as I count from 20 down to 1 you can just allow that feeling that feels right for you to grow inside you. I want to get to one, you can allow that feeling to enter. That hole where the craving used to be and fill that up and seal it up with that feeling. that positive, happy feeling. So I'm gonna count from 20 down to one, and while I do that, that feeling can grow stronger and stronger. And then when I get to one, I'm gonna say now, and that's when you can fill that hole with that feeling and seal it in. Twenty. Nineteen, Fifteen, 
14 13 12 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 Now Fill that hole with that wonderful healing feeling filling it up and sealing it shut so that whenever you think even think about smoking you can have that feeling which reminds you that you no longer need to do that and you can feel so good about yourself just thinking about smoking can be a reward for not smoking emotionally and you can really, really feel good about yourself about your accomplishment and the work that you've put in to making and allowing these changes to occur within you now and moving into the future every day feeling more healthy with a clearer mind and every day remembering to say something nice to yourself reminding yourself how well you are doing in life reminding yourself that you deserve to be happy and healthy bring this session to an end as I said before I advise listening to it 30 days every day for 30 days and bore yourself for 30 days and you'll notice that this as well as all my other sessions are much more than just about the topic that I'm discussing it's much more than just about smoking and certain other changes positive healthy changes can occur within you and your life
now. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to three, you can open your eyes. Feeling wonderful. One. Two. Become more aware of your surroundings if you're not already. Three. Open your eyes and remember all these new learnings and new ways of thinking. And you can start to notice changes as they naturally occur in your life. Thank you for listening, enjoy the rest of the day, and I'll speak to you next time. Bye.